All right, so first step is going to be to apply Massasar Benzoin, and I'm going to apply this very liberally in the area. And I'm continually keeping a finger on that area as I'm working to avoid pulling it back at all. We don't want it to get dislodged uh, this early in the stage, obviously. So a very wide application of the Benzoin, get everything nice and sticky to help hold that catheter in place. Just to speed things along, I'm going to dab this a little bit with a serial 4x4. Just helps let it dry and become tacky more quickly. Now that's nice and sticky, I'm going to put a couple extra coils in here. And we'll zoom in here in just a second. So I'm going to loop this catheter a little bit. Again, making sure that tip doesn't come displaced at all. I'm going to wrap it around. And this is just yet another way that we can help prevent it from dislodging. That way if it gets tugged on, hopefully it displaces these loops before it displaces the tip of the catheter. So now that we have those loops in place, if I can keep this other end out of the way. We're going to apply some Histocryl. You've seen us do this several times before. This is uh, similar to Dermabond. It's going to be a skin sealant, essentially a surgical glue, and we're going to apply that right over the puncture site. Noel is free dropping that Histocryl. That way we can use this on multiple patients uh, without cross-contamination. So just three or four drops. Usually we'll do one more just to make sure we get good coverage. And then I use our filter needle that comes in the epidural kit as a magic spreading wand to evenly apply all this and get a nice seal. Next step we do in this dressing application is put on a couple Steri strips. Hold everything in place here. I make a point of not covering that puncture site. That way the patient comes back in for evaluation and the catheter is not working. We can see exactly where it's located at the skin and make sure that it didn't get pulled back. Um, and that's the reason for it not working. So I just apply three steri strips here. I try to be nice to the patient and avoid any free waxing when he takes this off. So that should be nice and secure. This particular location tends to leak more than some of the other locations, this lower extremity femoral block. Um, so to help protect against the leakage, I'm going to apply a sterile 2x2, two two, as you can see here. And I'll just lay that right over top everything, as you can see there. And then the last step we do is to apply a sterile tegaderm dressing on top of all of this. So here's our tegaderm dressing. I'm going to put that right over top of it here. That 2x2 two two also helps to act as a little bit of a pressure dressing and again help minimize the possibility of leakage. The leakage isn't usually a problem. It can be a little bit of a nuisance and get the sheets wet at night, but most of the time the catheter is still going to work okay despite a little bit of leakage. I'll just apply that, and that'll do it. Should be a nice solid block form and uh, remain in, in place for the three or four days we have that catheter in.